Hello friends, Kurt Bergland here. I'm not Jim Nance. I'm just not. But I want to share with you a couple of questions that people are constantly asking me, both online and just when I'm at the grocery store. Those two questions are, do you think Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone? And the second question is, when are you going to do more APA King of the Hill Hall of Fame set tournament action? Well, I've got good news about question number two, because it's today. We are back at it. Let's go over the standings and then get to today's game. At the very top by two games. And really, in these standings, the only thing that matters is wins. Because if you want to make the World Series, you got to have 10 of them. It's the 61 to the 80 team. They have a 5-3 and three record. Most importantly, they have five wins. They're halfway to the World Series. Second place, the Negro Leaguers are tied with three wins with the 21 to the 40s the, uh, and the 81 to the present American Leaguers. The third place is a three-way tie between the 81 to the present National Leaguers, the, the 41 to 60s, and the current King of the Hill, the 1901 to 1920 Dead Ballers. Bringing up the rear is the not yet Hall of Famers with just one win. But the thing of it is, is that you're only fighting for the second spot. So if you look at it that way, the even the not yet Hall of Famers are only two games out of the World Series. So, uh, what happens? Well, if you win, you keep playing. You cycle through these teams. Uh, if you lose, you're out until it's your turn again. So today's game is the Negro Leaguers at the 1901 to 1920 Dead Ballers. The winner of this game goes on to play the Not Yet Hall of Famers. So that's the next game in the sequence. But we don't know which of these two teams is going to get that uh, distinction. The pitchers in today's game... Uh, will be uh, Ray Brown, a incredible Negro Leagues pitcher, uh, pitched for a number of teams, was really a big game pitcher, known as a big game guy. He is a B pitcher with a YZ modifier, and he will be up against the 1901 to 1920 dead ballers, Stan Kovaleski, who is an A pitcher with a YZ modifier. Let's go to the starting lineups and roll some APA Hall of Fame set King of the Hill tournament action. For the visiting Negro Leaguers, Turkey Stearns will lead off in center field. Mule Suttles will bat second in left field. Josh Gibson will bat third behind the plate. Oscar Charleston will bat fourth in center field. Buck Leonard will bat fifth at first base. Judd Wilson will bat sixth at third base. Pop Lloyd will bat seventh. He's at second base. Even though his card says shortstop, he played there. And Willie Wells will bat eighth at shortstop. Ray Brown is on the mound, and he will bat number nine. For the homestanding 1901 to 1920 dead ballers, it's Ty Cobb leading off in right field. Jimmy Collins, or I'm sorry, Eddie Collins batting second at second base. Tris Speaker will bat third in center field. Harry Hooper will bat fourth in left field. George Sister will bat fifth at first base. Home Run Baker will bat sixth at third base. Joe Tinker will bat seventh at shortstop. And Roger Bresnahan will bat eighth behind the plate. Kowalski will bat ninth, and there is his card. And we are ready to go. No player, no position player may start four games in a row at the same position. Uh, and we are using five-man starting rotations in this tournament. All right, so with all of that underway, <clears throat> we are ready to roll. <clears throat> Both these teams are fielding one teams for defense. <clears throat> Turkey Stearns 
And that one is a ground ball to Collins. He's going to throw to Sisler, and there's one out in the first. We are underway. <clears throat> now it settles. Pitch to Mule. It is a line drive base hit center field. So the New York Leaguers have their first hit and their first base runner. Josh Gibson up. That one's popped up. Under it is Bresnahan, and he's going to put it away for out number two. Oscar Charleston comes to the plate. Hey, strikes out. Kovaleski gets him. That stands first strikeout. And there's... That's the end of the first inning. Nothing across for the Negro Leaguers. All right. For the dead ballers, it's Cobb, Collins, and Speaker. Lefty, lefty, lefty against Ray Brown. And there's a base hit for Cobb over first base. And he's aboard with a single. Collins up now. He will take the first pitch. And there goes Ty Cobb. And he steals second base on Josh Gibson. He's in scoring position already. Now Brown from the stretch goes after Collins. This is hit to right. Under it is, sorry, Charleston. I think I misspoke and said he was in center. He's in right. Charleston makes the catch. Cobb will hold it second. And it'll be Speaker. Hit from Brown to Triss is ball four. So there's two on now for the dead ballers. With one out and Hooper at the plate. Brown the stretch and the pitch. That's a 42. That's ball two. That's ball two. Next pitch to Hooper is a 41. That one is grounded to Wells. He goes to Lloyd for one. The relay to Leonard is in time for a 6-4-3 rally-killing, soul-crushing double play, and we've played one complete with no score. Kowalski back at it now against Leonard. I'm going to switch dice, go into these. I think they'll be easier for you to see, so we'll go with those. Leonard, Wilson, and Lloyd in the Negro Leaguer's second inning. It's a base hit for Buck. He's on with nobody out. Judd Wilson. Kowalski, the stretch, and the pitch to Judd is a 53. And that is a 19. And that is a grounder to Baker. He's going to fire to Sisler and get retire Wilson at first as Leonard moves up to second base. Now it's Pop Lloyd with Willie Wells on deck. Pitch to Pop. He is grounded to Sisler. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sisler flips to Kovaleski covering and there's two outs. Leonard moves to third. Willie Wells at the plate. They're going to walk him and face Ray Brown. A little bit of a risk because Stearns is, is now looming on deck, but they're walking Wells. Negro Leaguers at the corners, and Ray Brown at the plate now. The pitch from Kovaleski is trouble. This is going to be a zero, and that turns into a base hit. Yep, it's going to score Leonard from third, one nothing Negro Leaguers, and Wells is going to get to third. And Ray Brown helps himself with a single, one nothing Negro Leaguers, and Turkey Stearns is up with men at the corners. Kobleski the stretch and the pitch. Hit to right, but not deep. Under it is Cobb, and he'll put it away for out number three. Negro Leaguers break out on top with a solo run. On two hits, they leave two. Bottom of the second coming. So Ray Brown's got a little bit of margin for error now at one to nothing. Sisler, Baker, and Tinker coming to the plate. Base hit for Sisler. 
He's aboard. Baker coming to the plate. The sixth place hitter against Ray Brown. Brown the stretch, check Sisler. The pitch, there goes Sisler. It's the hit and run. That's an 18. Grounded to Willie Wells. He's going to throw to Leonard and retire Baker as Sisler moves to second base safely. He's in scoring position now for Joe Tinker. Brown the stretch and the pitch is hit in the air to center field. Turkey Stearns is under it, and he's going to take it for out number two. Bresnahan up with first base open and Kovaleski on deck. They're going to go after Bresnahan. Pitch is a 42. He walked him. So maybe it's the old unintentional, intentional walk, and Kovaleski comes up. Brown's pitch. Hey, struck him out and gets out of the jam in the second. A hit. They leave two. Nothing across, though. After two, it's one nothing Negro Leaguers. Kovaleski will face Suttles, Gibson, and Charleston. 2-3-4 in the Negro Leaguers order. Mule is one for one. The pitch. Base hit. He's two for two. Now it's Gibson who's 0 for 1. Kovaleski's got to step carefully here. The pitch. And there goes. Wait a minute. Nope. He holds. He holds. Next pitch to Gibson. 28. Ground ball. Tinker. He goes to Collins for one. The relay is not in time. Gibson is safe on the fielder's choice. And there's one out now for Charleston. Kovaleski the stretch and the pitch to Oscar is strike three swinging. He gets him for his second strikeout. Two down in the third and now Leonard. Pitch to Buck. Hey, struck him out for his third strikeout. Kovaleski in a little bit of a groove. Played two and a half. It's one nothing Negro Leaguers in this one. Top of the order in the bottom of the third. Cobb, Collins, and Speaker against Brown, who's been in trouble but has avoided anybody crossing the pay station. There's a zero for Cobb, and that's going to be extra bases. Ty Cobb with a leadoff double in the third. Now it's Collins. Brown, the stretch. The pitch. Collins squares to bunt, and he gets it down. And that's going to be going to Judd Wilson, who fires to Buck Leonard, and that will retire Collins as Cobb moves to third with one out now. Speaker up. Infield is going to play in. They're playing in with one out and Speaker at the plate. Pitch to Speaker from Brown, and there's a hit. We got a tie game. Base hit to center field. And Cobb scores from third. One to one ball game with Speaker at first, and now it's going to be Hooper. Hooper grounded into a double play in the first inning. Brown the stretch. And the pitch to Harry Hooper. Hit and run is on. At the 25, caught by Pop Lloyd. He fires to Leonard for a line drive double play. A soul-crushing, rally-killing second double play of the game hit into by Harry Hooper, but the dead ballers score a run on two hits and leave none. After three, we're tied at one in this one. Now it's Kovaleski back out to face Judd Wilson, 
Uh, Floyd Willie Wells, six, seven, eight. That's hit to right, but not deep. Under it is Cobb, and there's one down. Now it's Pop Lloyd. And this one is grounded to, I can never remember this one, grounded to Eddie Collins, who's going to make the play to Sisler for two down. And now Willie Wells. Ray Brown's on deck. Wells was intentionally walked in his first time up. This one is grounded to Baker. He fires to Sisler, and the side is retired. That's six in a row for Kovaleski, who seems to have righted the ship since his, since his shaky second inning. Brown out for the bottom of the fourth. It's Sisler, Baker, and Tinker. Five, six, seven hitters. Sisler's one for one. And there's another hit. He's two for two. Sisler's aboard. Baker's up. Baker's 0 for 1. Brown the stretch and the pitch. This one is grounded to Lloyd. He goes to Wells for 1. The relay to Leonard is not in time. Baker beats the rap. He's safe on a fielder's choice that goes 4-6 to retire Sisler. Now it's Tinker who's 0 for 1. There's a base hit for Joe Tinker. Off Brown's glove. Rolls toward Judd Wilson, but Judd can't make a play. It's an infield hit. Baker's on second. Tinker's on first. Bresnahan's coming up. There's one out. And they're going to get some action going in the bullpen. It's going to be Hilton Smith starting to throw. Bresnahan up. Two on, one out. The pitch. And that's trouble. This is going to get into the gap for an extra base hit. Left center field. Gonna score Baker. It's 2-1. Gonna score Tinker. It's 3-1. And it's a double for Bresnahan with one out. He's on second base. Kovaleski's at the plate. So that was a big, big, yep, that was a big, big double for Bresnahan. Dead ballers lead 3-1. Brown in trouble. The pitch home. Kovaleski squares to bunt. It's a 21 on the sacrifice attempt with Bresnahan on second. Buck Leonard fumbles the bunt. Everyone's going to be safe. As Bresnahan moves to third. Now it's first and third with one out. And Cobb at the plate. They're going to play in. Brown's pitch to Cobb. Uh, base hit to right field. Scoring is Bresnahan. It's 4-1. Kovaleski will get to third, and it's 4-1. That's going to do it for Ray Brown. And his band of renown. Three and two thirds for Brown. Seven, eight hits allowed. One walk, two walks, no strikeout, one strikeout. Uh, four runs. Right now, we don't know how many are earned yet. So the new pitcher will be Hilton Smith. He's going to bat in the seventh spot in the order. They're going to take out Pop Lloyd. And have Grant come in to play second base. So it's a double switch.
Okay. So, Collins is up. Kovaleski's at third. Cobb's at first. There's one out. The infield is in. And that's going to be trouble. That's going to get over Turkey Stern's head, and it's going to score Kovaleski from third. It's going to score Cobb all the way from first. It's a two-run double for Collins. And it's now 6-1. That can close the book on Ray Brown and his band of renown. Uh, five runs will be earned. Speaker up now. Base hit for Speaker. This is going to get in the gap. Another double scores Collins. It's 7 1. And there's still only one out. Hooper up. A pair of double plays on his ledger. Smith in all sorts of hot water. This has popped up. Judd Wilson in foul territory will take it for out number two, and that'll bring up Sisler. Big, big inning for the dead ballers. And that's a base hit for Sisler. His second of the inning. Speaker scores 8 1. And Baker comes to the plate, who's 0 for 2. Ground ball. Judd Wilson, he's going to go the short way to Frank Grant, and that will retire the side. But an awful inning for the Negro Leaguers as the dead ballers score 7. On seven hits, they leave one. And after four, have an eight to one lead. But it is a mistake to count anybody out this early in this tournament. All right, so eight one, top of the fifth. Grant up. Kovaleski's pitch is clanked off home run Baker's glove. Not what they wanted to start the fifth. So there's a base runner for the Negro Leaguers. Now it's Stearns. Pitch from Kovaleski. Is grounded to Collins. He goes to Tinker for one. The relay to Sisler is a soul-crushing, rally-killing 4-6-3 double play. And now it's Suttles. Pitch from Kovaleski is another chance for Baker, and he handles this one and throws to Sisler, and that retires the Negro Leaguers. We're halfway through this one. It's 8-1, dead ballers. It'll be Tinker, Bresnahan, and Kovaleski against Smith in the fifth. Ground ball, Judd Wilson. He gloves it, plants, and fires to Buck Leonard for out number one. Now it's Bresnahan, maybe the hero of the game with his two-run double. Ground ball, Willie Wells, the devil, throws to Buck Leonard for out number two. And now it's Kowaleski with two outs and nobody aboard. And this is hit to center. But under it is Stearns for out number three. Smith writes the ship, but maybe way too late. It's 8-1 after five. All right, so the Negro Leaguers have 3-4-5 coming up. Gibson, Charleston, and Buck Leonard. Pitch to Josh is grounded to Tinker. And Joe throws to Sisler for out number one in the sixth. Now it's Charleston, 0 for 2. And Oscar grounds this one to Tinker. He's gobbled everything else up today. He throws to Sisler for out number two. Now it's Buck Leonard, 1 for 2 with a run scored. And this one is grounded to Baker. He plants and throws to Sisler, and it's another 1-2-3 inning for Kovaleski. 
He's only allowed four hits, all of them singles. He had a rough second inning, but really that's been it. Kowalski's been in charge. Hilton Smith out for one more inning. It's Cobb, Collins, and Speaker in the sixth. Cobb singles, and that's his fourth hit of the game. With Collins coming up. One for two. Pitch to him is a base hit. Cobb is not going to stop at second. He's going to go around to third base, and there's men at the corners now with nobody out for speaker. Action starts in the Negro Leaguers' bullpen one more time. Leon Day gets going. Newark Eagles pitching ace. Speaker's two for two. The infield's back. The pitch is a 29, and that is a comebacker. Gloved by Smith. He checks Cobb at third and throws to Leonard at first. So there's one down now and runners at second and third for Hooper. Infield in now. Pitch is hit to center. Under it is Stearns. Turkey's going to make the catch. And Cobb will hold against his will. And now it's Sisler with Baker on deck. Smith the stretch and the pitch. That's hit to left. Toward the line is Suttles, and he's going to make the catch. Hilton Smith had trouble in the six, but nobody crossed the pay station. So we played six complete. It's 8-1 dead ballers. Kovaleski is out now to face... Wilson, and then a pinch hitter for Hilton Smith, and then Willie Wells. All righty. So here's Judd to lead it off. And that's ball four. So maybe Kowaleski's tiring here in the seventh. And he gets some action going in the dead ballers' bullpen. If they blow a seven-run lead with three innings to go, it wouldn't be good. So it'll be Joe McGinnity, the Iron Man, warming up for the dead ballers. Wilson's on first. Now it's going to be a pinch hitter for Smith. And that's going to be Pete Hill. Kowalski the stretch and the pitch, and that's a base hit for Hill. Well, look at this. Judd Wilson's going to go to third base, and Hill's at first. So there's men at the corners with nobody out in the seventh. Eight to one, but this is how you get rally started. So, see if that helps. There we go. So, Wells is up. Infield at double play depth. Pitch from Kowaleski. There goes Hill, and he's going to steal second. The pitch to Wells is a 15, and that's going to be a base hit with second and third, I think. It is. Eight to two now as Wilson scores from third. Hill goes to third, and it's an RBI for Wells. Still nobody out. Grant at the plate. First pitch to him. There goes Wells. Stolen base. Second and third, and that's going to do it for Kovaleski. It's going to be the Iron Man coming on, Joe McGinnity. He is an A pitcher with a YZ modifier. Grant is up. Infield is back. Second and third. Nobody out. The pitch. 
That's hit to center field. Under it is speaker. The runners will hold. There's now one out. Now it's Stearns. Again, it is pitch to Turkey. Line drive caught by Sisler. He fires to Tinker, and it's a soul-crushing, rally-killing, line-out, double play. So the Negro Leaguers settle for one on two hits, and they leave one. And it's 8-2 after six and a half. Time to stretch them out. Pete Hill will play center field. Turkey Stearns will come out. And Leon Day will be the new pitcher. Day will bat in the leadoff spot. Hilton Smith is done. It's home run Baker. Joe Tinker, Roger Bresnahan coming up in the bottom of the seventh. Walk down. Man on with nobody out. Tinker up. Pitch to Joe. Hit to left. Mule Suttles on the run. We'll take it for out number one. Now it's Bresnahan. He struck him out, two gone, and now it's going to be McGinnity. They're going to go with him. And he walked him. So there's two on now with two outs and Cobb coming up. Cobb is four for four. And it's hit to center. Under it is Pete Hill, and that will retire the side. So we've played seven, and it's dead ballers eight, Negro Leaguers two. These, these dead ballers, well, actually both these teams I thought were going to run deep in this tournament. They still could, but boy, these dead ballers, once they get going. Suttles, Gibson, and Charleston, two, three, four hitters in the eighth. Hey, struck him out. That's first strikeout for Joe McGinnity. Now it's Charles or Gibson. Charleston's on deck. Josh is 0 for 3. He walks him. Five outs from moving on. Charleston. Struck him out. Second strikeout for McGinnity. Now it's Buck Leonard, who's one for three. The big men have not come through for the Negro Leaguers. This is hit to center. Under it is Speaker, and that retires the side. Played seven and a half, and it's 8-2. Eight 8-2 two. Eight two dead ballers. Leon Day will face Collins, Speaker, and Hooper. Two, three, four in the bottom of the eighth. Ground ball, Willie Wells. He throws to Buck Leonard for out number one. Now it's speaker. Triss is two for three. He's three for four, and it's a base hit. And he's going to cause trouble. Hooper takes the first pitch. There goes speaker, and he steals second. Day of the stretch and the pitch. And this is grounded to Grant. He's going to third to Wilson, who applies the tag to Speaker, trying to get to third. So it's a 4-5 put out on the fielder's choice. Hooper is safe at first. And Sisler is up. There's two outs now in the bottom of the eighth, the pitch. And it's grounded to Grant. He's going to flip to Wells, and that'll retire the dead ballers in the eighth. We go to the ninth. It's 8-2. Negro Leaguers, they got some work to do. McGinnity looking to finish the job. It's Judd Wilson, Pete Hill, Willie Wells, unless I go to the bench. Wilson 
0 for 2. And that's going to be a strike. Next pitch from McGinnity is trouble. This is a zero, and that's going to be a extra base hit. Getting over everybody's head in left center. Judd Wilson around second. He's going to go into third, sliding with a leadoff triple. That'll get action going in the dead ballers bullpen. It's going to be Big Ed Walsh. Pete Hill at the plate. On deck as well, the pitch is hit to right. Under it is Cobb. Oh, nope. Yep. <laughs> Under it is Cobb. He makes the catch. And Wilson's going to hold. Yep, Wilson's going to hold. One down now, and it's Wells. McGinnity, the stretch, and the pitch. Base hit. Looped right over Collins' head. It's a single for Wells, and it's 8-3 to three now. One out in the ninth. Grant coming to the plate. They're going to hit for him. And it's going to be Cristobal Torriente. Hitting for Grant. Day is standing in the on-deck circle, but he's not going to bat. Wells is at first. There's one out. Hit to right. Cobb is under this one, and that's out number two. Hitting for Hill. <clears throat> Last chance saloon will be Papa Bell. Cool Papa Bell batting for Leon Day. On deck is Mule Suttles. Wells at first, two men out. Pitch from McGinnity. Is grounded to Tinker. He goes the short way to Collins, and that ends the ball game. A big, big seven run fourth inning. Puts it away for the dead ballers. They had eight runs on ten hits. And they committed no errors. For the Negro Leaguers, they had three runs on eight hits. And they committed uh, one huge error in the fourth inning. Winning pitcher is Stan Kovaleski. Losing pitcher, Ray Brown. There is no save in the ballgame. Let's look at the standings. Uh... Before we depart, I will make this look pretty before the next time we are together for this tournament. But the New York Leaguers dropped to three and three, so they're still in a second place tie. But the 1901 to 1920 dead ballers with their win have now moved into a four-way tie for second place. They play the not yet Hall of Famers in the next game. Of course, they'll be at home because they are the kings of the hill right now. So with a win over the not yet Hall of Famers in their next game, the dead ballers from 1901 to 1920 can move up to four wins and be all by themselves in second place and the way they're playing they are definitely hot so thank you for being with me i'm kurt berglund don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel tell me if you like the tournament and who you like to win it i'd love to read that in the comments have a good day don't forget to subscribe thank you again have a good night so long everybody